A. Ocala. Thank you very much. Dr. Christine Horner has been with us before, and she's on the air with us again. And uh, you know her, and you've spoken to her before. By the way, the phone line is open if you would like to call the doctor during the course of this interview. Uh, Dr. Horner is a leading breast cancer prevention expert, a board-certified surgeon, and has written the book, Waking, Waking the Warrior Goddess, Harnessing the Power of Nature and Natural Medicines to Achieve Extraordinary Health. And we're going to talk about preventive strategies for breast cancer and why a breast cancer vaccine could be beneficial, and I'm not so sure if that's something new or not. So let's find out from Dr. Horner. Good morning, doctor. How are you? Oh, oh there you are. Good morning. I had the wrong button pushed. I've only been doing it forever, right? Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, and where are you again? Where are you calling from? I'm in beautiful, sunny San Diego. San Diego. Got up early to be with us, right? Yeah. So Robin said this morning she wanted to wake the warrior goddess, and I said, so do I. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so um, is the vac that the just the word vaccine in association with any cancer sounds like good news? Is this something new? Yeah, it actually it is. So, um, you know, as we know about the cervical uh, HPV virus that there's now a vaccine for. So, um, there has been a vac a uh, virus actually that was identified way back in 1936. And then nothing was really done about it. And so uh, recently, we'll say in the last uh, maybe five to seven years or something like that, there's a number of researchers that are looking into various different uh, types of vaccines that might be uh, helpful against breast cancer. So there's a virus that actually has been identified, um, and that virus um, is present in about 40% of uh, specimens that they tested uh, for breast cancer. Cancer. And uh, if women have the more aggressive forms of cancer, like inflammatory breast carcinoma or um, another one that's more aggressive is what we call, um, it's a uh, triple negative, meaning that it doesn't have any of the positive receptors for estrogen, progesterone, or another one called HER2 new. And that's a more aggressive uh, form of tumor. And so what they find in those types of tumors is that the incidence of this virus showing up in those tissue specimens is up to 65% or so. So the thought is, is that if we develop a vaccine, that's against this virus, um, then potentially we could uh, eliminate, you know, 40%, maybe even higher uh, amounts of breast cancer. Oh, wow. It, 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 okay, just the very fact that there's a virus associated with cancer, um, is there, a, so if you avoided the virus, would you avoid cancer? You know, uh, not, a, not necessarily so. There's so many different things that are contributing factors, you know, to developing cancer. And what's interesting is that you get kind of these um, kind of cross-pollinations, I'll say, with it. So, for instance, you know, I just uh, came out with an updated revised edition of my uh, book, Waking the Warrior Goddess. It came out on October 1st, and it's all about all the natural approaches to protecting against and fighting breast cancer. And what I did is I went through the medical literature and looked for any Thing that had statistical influence either we need to avoid or we need to favor in order to lower our risk. So there's um, dozens and dozens of influences from toxins to stress to um, you know, staying up too late at night, to eating, you know, certain junk foods, to, you know, and so forth. So um, the interesting thing with all of this, though, is that if you are um, doing some of those things that we know that are contributors, one of the ways that they all kind of converge and contributing is that they're um, kind of knocking out our immune system, uh, which is our, uh, you know, got all the different cells that are kind of our army that goes out and looks for foreign invaders and cancer cells. Right, and right. so when our immune system gets slugged down, then um, it could be that the virus will start to grow, you know, because we're not uh, taking care of the, you know, handling the virus because of the, the weakened immune system. So there's many things that contribute. And if you're very strong, you got a strong immune system. Um, if your gut bacteria are, you know, extremely healthy, then you can um, prevent yourself from even getting this virus um, in the first place. Really? So, Yeah. Uh, men uh, have been diagnosed with breast cancer. Does that virus show up in them also? 
Well, yeah. So what's interesting is that the the uh, it's called the breast um, cancer mammary virus, and so what they have found is in men, it actually doesn't cause breast cancer, it causes non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. So sometimes you'll see in families, um, you know, when you're really looking at it, I've talked to some researchers about this, where they'll have a higher incidence of breast cancer, and the men are having uh, are having an incidence of, of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. So it actually turns up a little bit different in, in men. Well, when, uh, we talk, when we talk about cancer in general and the vaccine is it possible that eventually there'll be like a, it's just part of the normal procedure like we get vaccines for other things now and we'll actually be able to eradicate breast cancer one day well a certain percentage of breast cancer so again they're finding it across the board about 40 percent so that means 60 percent of the women do not have the virus you know there's other things that are causing it but certainly you could knock out a significant per- percentage and at this point in time the people that are kind of uh, in the lead um, as far as coming out with a vaccine are at the Cleveland Clinic and they um, aren't targeting the virus per se what they're targeting is a particular protein that they found that's present only in women who are breastfeeding and uh, that particular protein also shows up in most breast cancers so if you uh, form a uh, vaccine to this um, it's called uh, alpha lacto albumin uh, this uh, particular protein then what happens is that um, they found that it's effective against the virus you know too um, and so at the Cleveland Clinic they've developed a vaccine against that uh, protein and um, they're um, just announced that they're going to go into clinical trials starting in two years and what they're going to initially do is vaccinate women who already have had breast cancer and they have that aggressive, I told you about the triple negative right, you know, uh, receptor right. tumor. So they're going to give the vaccine to women who are triple negative. They've already had breast cancer and they're going to see if it can prevent a recurrence from oh, happening. So oh, that's wow. happening in, in two years. And then, um, you know, normally, <laughs> normally it takes a really long time, you know, when, when something gets developed and goes through research um, before it becomes a Available for the general public. So again, it may be 10 years before we actually see the breast cancer vaccine available, just like the vaccine that we have that you know is recommended for the teenagers for cervical cancer, the HPV. Mm-hmm. So in the meantime, um, you know, where my message is about all the things that I found that um, can help to lower the risk of developing breast cancer, you know, which I have in my book. And and again, if you're keeping your body healthy, you can find off, you know, various different viruses, and there's certain, there's even theories about bacteria that, you know, are involved with there's it, a, but, um, yeah. And there's an interesting theory in the notes that were provided for me. It has to do with love. Now, listen listen to this. Now, I wanted the doctor to comment on this. Now, now here's an interesting thing, Troy. You're going to like this one. If a woman is giving more love than she's getting, she's more likely to get breast cancer. So that means the husband, or boyfriend, whatever, has to say, Look, either you stop loving me so much, or I got to start loving you more. <laughs> it's, it's, it's option B. <laughs> <laughs> option B. Okay, so how, me, how do you? Option B. You got, yeah, you know what's interesting is that um, the research shows that of all the things that um, affect us as far as our health and our survival, more than genetics, more than food, more than exercise, more than stress. It's being in loving, supportive relationships. So we're wired as human beings to be in loving, supportive relationships, and it actually, as I said, has the most influence. It keeps our immune system healthy. It, you know, really helps uh, with all the with every emotion that we feel. We actually release various different chemicals in our body called molecules of emotion, yeah, and yeah. they have direct effects again on our immune system and. And the rest of our health, <clears throat> and then on the contrary uh, part of it is if you are in a toxic, you know, relationship, it has a tremendous amount of stress, and then proteins that have the opposite effect, which are depressing the immune system, and um, and it's associated with much, uh, much higher incidence of um, ill health, including cancers. Uh-huh. Uh, so- would, would that be the same as is like um um. 
not necessarily just the love, uh, uh, loving your partner, etc., but 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 just your your attitude in life and, and always smiling and all. Because uh, uh, Robin mentioned this morning that I'm, I'm Troy always smiling. Smiles a lot, yeah. And, and I'm I'm a 59 year old man just turned 59. I can't believe it. Um, <laughs> but but I'm extremely healthy and I always He's have hot. been. Knock on wood He's still and hot, everything. Knock on granite. And I'm like, yeah, knock on granite. Um, uh, I, I, but I'm I am. I, I I do love life and I love. The, I love my job, and I it's just uh-huh. and, and does that help you think? I mean, oh, absolutely. So you know, they found that people that are optimists, you know, definitely there is a correlation with better health and and uh, longevity. And again, with every emotion that we have, we're you know creating these uh, various different molecules which do have direct. I think playing on our bass DNA. guitar helps too. Doesn't playing bass yeah. guitar? Bass guitar is very important. And, and Harley <laughs> Davidson's right. Yes. Yeah. Bass, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> what is? What, I, and I'm, again, I'm not trying to be a smarty, but I have no. Here. What, is, what is a panka or pancha karma? What is that? Pancha karma. So that's a detoxification procedure. So one of the things that we know is that toxins get into our body and our world has become more and more toxic. And uh, 5,000 years ago, the system of medicine called Ayurveda, which is a traditional system of medicine uh, from India, Deepak Chopra talks about it. And it's all. That guy shows up in everything. Yeah, he does. Yeah, he does. <laughs> yeah, he's yeah. everything. Deepak yeah. Chopra. Yeah. If, you're, if you write a book, you get him to do a comment, yeah. it'll sell. <laughs> Right. Is, <laughs> so he, uh, yeah. So anyway, most people go, I've never heard of it. Well, that you have heard of it because he talks about it. But basically, it's a system that teaches us about natural laws or the rule book of being human beings. And if you follow those, it en- enlivens your body's inner healing intelligence and helps you fight off any kind of diseases. And if you break those rules, then um, it uh, causes obstructions in the flow of your inner healing intelligence. It makes it very stupid and it cannot uh, keep you healthy. So so that's kind of the, that uh, particular system. But in it, they recognized 5,000 years ago that even eating organic uh, fruits and vegetables, which was all the, the only option you had back then, and, um, and we didn't have, you know, chemical agriculture or, you know, chemicals used in just daily living. And they recognized that um, just from stress and just from uh, natural toxins in the food that everybody needed to have uh, detoxification procedures done in order to eliminate those toxins and um, cause, you know, a, a big boost in health. So, so what, uh, definitely... What, so what, co- I, I'm going to interrupt. what causes what? Do the toxins cause you to be negative or does your negative attitude cause you to have toxins? <laughs> oh, I like that <laughs> question. <laughs> <laughs> Wake up, warrior goddess. Like I said, you, can, you, know, you can't separate them out. You're trying to do the chicken and the egg, but they all, you know... Oh, they happen. They, they all, work uh, together. Yeah. Yeah, you know, so the important thing is is that you can get these toxins out, which we know wreak havoc in the in the body and definitely are contributors to breast cancer. And so there are techniques from Panchakarma, which you do as a, in a medically supervised clinic, to doing home detoxifications. And actually, I got a whole chapter of my book on that. That really works, though. Yeah. There was, this, yes, there was this thing. There was this thing we had one time, and there was a lady, and she was selling the stuff you put your feet in, and yeah. then and then uh-huh. the water becomes dirty. Right, black. Uh-huh. Right. Yeah, yes, and, right. and so I'm not going to be judgmental here. I want to know from a doctor. The, yeah. she, the claim was all the toxins in your body were coming out through the soles of your feet. Right. And I well, said, what did you walk through? I mean, how is, yeah, the, right. how is the water that dirty? I mean, is that really coming through the pores in your paws? That's well, right. it, is, it, is pulling, it is pulling some out, but there's more effective, you know, ways to do that. So, what is that? I yeah. mean, is that real or is that just a, a video trick? Because I didn't see yes, it in real it life. It actually is. I mean, so it is pulling out some toxins. It's not pulling out all the toxins in the body. And, it, you know, uh, really the more effective, you know, ways to do it is to purify your diet. You quit pouring in all the toxins. You go to a plant-based diet, juicing kinds of things. Uh, heat treatments we found like infrared saunas or um, extremely good at helping to, you know, draw toxins out and part of Panchakarma, you're doing lots of massage with sesame oil that's deeply penetrating, mobilizing the toxins with heat treatments and then doing some medicated colonics to help pull the toxins out. Yes, colonics. Yeah. Do you? Know, yeah, you, uh, do you? Uh, go ahead. I, I want to tell you something. We had on <laughs> earlier, I don't know if you know this lady, uh, Kira Bus- Busanich. She's the cupcake queen from the TV uh, Cupcake Wars. Anyway, listen. Uh, listen. Sorry. sorry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's okay. I I didn't know her either, but 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 now I know her. But anyway, listen to what she told us. She told us that she had a gluten issue, and everything she makes is gluten free. And the, here's the scary part: she was told before she discovered the gluten issue with herself that she was going to have to have a colon 
Yeah. Her colonoscopy colon removed. bag. Her, yes. Uh-huh. Is that what she said? Colon removed. Right. Removed. Right. Removed. She, 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 she tried the gluten-free diet three days later. Uh-huh. Everything was back to normal. She almost yeah. had a surgeon remove her colon. That's exactly right. So, you know, I, I used to be a surgeon. <laughs> and now I talk to people about what they can do to uh, protect their Avoid. health. Because really, we, unfortunately, the paradigm of medicine, we, you know, we're only taught tools of suppressing it with medications or cutting it out. And I didn't learn anything about health until after I got out of medical school and residency. I learned nothing about health in that. And then, you know, on my own, you know, started studying Ayurveda and, um, you know, really learned about what is natural that? health. Is that and, Darth's you know. brother? <laughs> what is that? Ira. Ayurveda, you know, he's got short-term memory problems here. That's what Deepak Chopra talks about, the natural health system from oh, India. That's right, yeah, that's Ira right. means life and Veda means knowledge, so it literally means oh, the really? knowledge of life and teaches uh, you about all the rules. Yeah. Uh, when you talk about uh, treating the virus with uh, medication, have you run into any resistance from other companies in the pharmaceutical end of it that are afraid that maybe this inoculation or this treatment will replace something that they have? Well, um, you know, more, more in, um, let's see, kind of uh, angled ways. So let's just say that 98% of the dollars that are raised through various different, um, re- uh, well, breast cancer organizations that are, you know, raising for research, it goes towards uh, new chemicals, basically, that pharmaceuticals will make, and only 2% of the money is going into uh, research for prevention. And so one of the problems that we ran into with uh, various different um, people that are working on the, br- on the breast cancer vaccine is that um, they were having a lot of trouble getting funding because, um, you know, that's where the influence of the pharmaceutical companies come in. But definitely, you know, we'll, we'll you know, there's a vaccine in development. Like I said, the Cleveland Clinic is the one that's furthest along with it, and they're going to start the clinical trials in two years. So, um, you know. That's, they'll get their foot in the door, you know, on that one. But you're right, cancer is a big business, and they there's a lot of strange things that happen yeah. uh, because of the money. Yeah, We've heard so many different things over the years. Uh, Waking the Warrior Goddess, the new edition, just came out October 1st. And uh, so how do we get it? Oh, so it's on my website, uh, drchristinehorner.com, D-R-C-H-R-I-S-T-I-N-E-H-O-R-N-E-R.com. It's also on Amazon.com and Barnes and & Nobles and, you know, all those different sites. So you can find it everywhere. It actually won the best health book of the year uh, back in 2006, and so I just upgraded it and, and uh, did the, the um, most recent studies, and there's really been an explosion in research in the last two years, so I added 150 pages because, wow. you know, there's just so much wow. you know, more new information that we have yeah Uh, why is it that uh, some people can lead an exemplary lifestyle they do everything right they're stress-free they eat right (laughs) exactly like Mm -hmm. her and then they get diagnosed with cancer and then they die Well, you know, there's so many different things that um, are uh, factors that can contribute to it. So you can say that somebody's doing everything right, but when you actually go in there and look, you'll find that there's some holes in that. So, for instance, you could say maybe somebody's exposed to a lot of toxins or electromagnetic frequencies. um, Like radio? <laughs> radio. That's exactly right. And then you know, well, Larry, you, can look at, you can look at relationship issues too. You know, because uh, you know the breast is overlying the heart, and so we actually I know that does mine. <laughs> yeah, the heart issues. You know, there. So yeah, you never know when you go in there and start digging around to see. You know what what What's might going be on? going on. Doctor, uh-huh. you, yeah. might, you might be the most fun doctor we ever have on the air, doctor. Oh, good. Uh, so I want to tell people some simple things they can do today. You know, because um, that's it when we talk about diet lifestyle and everything it's like i like to give people some simple tools they can do today okay. like today that's going to cut your risk in half so right. supplements you know believe it or not research shows that if you just do a couple of supplements you can cut your risk in half and that's a great way to start and then start making diet and lifestyle changes you know in addition to that so i talk so much about the immune system because that's the thing that's really kind of critical as far as our health and recognizing these cancer cells so One real simple way to boost up your immune system is to take um, mushrooms, medicinal mushrooms. And my favorite kind of base formula is (laughs) called AHCC. 
And AHCC is made from a group of medicinal mushrooms. It's got lots of research from Japan that shows that it, it helps to support every single cell in the immune system and helps you to fight off cancer so it, uh, people who take it on a regular basis have a much lower incidence of all sorts of different kinds of cancers. If you take AHCC and you have cancer, it actually improves your survival statistics. So, oh, wow. again, keeping your immune system strong. So AHCC, simple thing to do. Turmeric, the Indian spice uh, that's found in curries, mm-hmm. um, it is like almost too good to be true. It's considered the number one anti-cancer spice. It inhibits the growth of 17 different types of cancers. It's just so hard it to get a- used to. I'm just, <laughs> I- I'm not a fan of curry. Yeah, I know. Well, you can take hard. it as a supplement. I mean, oh, that's, really? that's the beautiful thing. So you can take that as a supplement. <laughs> um, green tea, you know, is another one that has phenomenal anti-cancer and, uh, effects, and it has synergistic effects with turmeric. So each one makes the other one more effective. Oh, so course. green tea enhances Gotta go to the, the anti-cancer Amrit effects. Palace, right? Get mushrooms. Huh? We we have a we have a re, one of the restaurants in town that always gets rave reviews is uh, is what I just named I named the Amrit it's called the Amrit Palace so. yeah uh-huh. in, in not Indian to give them food. a free ad but it's, it's an Indian restaurant yeah, yeah. It's great. right you know so all of those spices are medicinal but then also you know like I said you can take things as supplements that when you combine green tea and turmeric that each one makes the other one more effective so um, you know it's possible to do it that way and everybody can do that so it's a you know a simple way to really give yourself a boost to protection and then work on doing your diet and lifestyle changes that we know are so hard for people but the more that you do the the uh, better your health is going to be and you only get great side benefits since uh, you've seen so many people and done so many surgeries uh, for cancer and breast reconstruction in the back of your mind do you have a fear that you might have it well, One you day. know what? That's what started this all out. My mom got breast cancer uh, and early in my career, and she died from it. And then I was watching, you know, the women get younger and younger in my practice until I was doing breast reconstruction on women in their 20s. And I really did. I felt like, God, it's like, you know, when I get it, not if. And I thought that's the most disempowering way to live, and there's got to be something that women can do. So that's when I went through the medical literature, taking a look, and, you know, I found thousands of studies that show exactly why we have a breast cancer epidemic, all the things that we're doing to contribute to it and the things that we traditionally don't do in this culture that are highly protective. And, again, they're all natural from foods supplements, activities, relationships we talked about, stress. I mean, all of those things, um, if you're uh, doing that, we should be able to reduce the risk of breast cancer by at least 95% is what, you know, the research you know, a smile. Doesn't have a smile in her voice? Yes. Can, yes. <laughs> uh, in your professional and personal opinion, is it wise for women like Angelina Jolie, I'll take use her as the you know example uh-huh. to just go in and then if you're afraid that you're you have, if that that if you have a a family history of uh, breast cancer to have your breasts removed. Is yeah. that why? So the BR, yeah, the BRCA1 gene, which is kind of the main gene that's associated with the genetic form of breast cancer. Um, so that, what currently the statistics are that if you have that BRCA1 gene mutation, your chances of developing breast cancer is 80% by the time you're 80 years old. Now, just like normal breast cancer, you know, what we found is that the risk of uh, developing breast cancer has increased tremendously over the years. So when they do the family lineage and they go back 100 years, the incidence of breast cancer in BRCA1 gene families was one-third of what it is today. Why? Because all the things that we've been talking what about that saying. influence yeah. Yeah, decreases. And then the other thing that's really interesting is that there's certain uh, things like the mineral selenium, you know, which is dirt cheap, uh, is involved in the repair mechanisms of our DNA, and that BRCA1 gene actually has to do with DNA repair and tumor suppression. And so they did a double-blinded, placebo-controlled study in Europe on women with a BRCA1 gene. They gave them selenium supplements, and in two years, their risk of breast cancer had dropped by 200%. Wow. So I believe that we can, you know, the, the, uh, what Angelina Jolie did, you know, for her, I'm sure, was the best decision. We don't know what her medical history is. Maybe right. she had multiple breast biopsies. We, we don't know. Plus, she watched her mom die of cancer. And that fear is definitely something that could be incapacitating for people. And no matter how much you educate them, they still, you know, wake up every day thinking, is this the day it could get me? So doing surgery on those people can give them their life back. And there's definitely a place for doing it. But it's not the only 
option. Um, you know, it's very uh, much an option that you can, you know, take on all these diet and lifestyle choices. There's many different types of supplements that directly affect that BRCA1 gene, and then you can use non-invasive techniques like ultrasound, thermography, and so forth to monitor the breast and the ovaries. And the moment there's anything that looks like it's, you know, might be a problem, you can go in there and, you know, check it out before it becomes, you know, a serious or life-threatening uh, issue. Doctor, it's always, yeah. always good to have you on. I just have one more question. What are you giving out at Halloween? <laughs> <laughs> no, he really wants to know what, what costume you're wearing. <laughs> Turmeric, green tea, <laughs> supplements. How's that? Oh, man. Trick or treat. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I'd be popular with the kids, but hey. <laughs> just, wear, just as long as you wear that cat costume, I'm fine. I don't, yeah. care, what you, I don't care what you put in my bag. <laughs> right. I, I do have one of those. <laughs> I, I, have, I was hoping so. <laughs> And I look darn good in it. Too. I bet you do. <laughs> yeah. I bet you do. Uh, Doctor, always fun to have you on. You're always welcome back. Waking the Warrior Goddess is the book. DrChristineHorner.com is the website. And uh, I'm guessing you can get it everywhere. Is, is the new uh, edition available as an ebook? It is, yeah. So okay. it's on uh, Kindle. Uh, yeah, which so what do we look at the third? It's called the third edition, right? That's the one we want? Yeah, it's the third edition, and we changed the cover of it, so it's the one where it's got my mug. My mug is on the front. You got a good oh, mug. Good. Don't worry about it. Your mug Thank is you. fine. <laughs> uh, by, by the way, we have a student in here, and I'm going to let him end the, end the interview. His name is Leonard, and uh, we'll, first we'll say goodbye, Doctor. Always good to have you on the show with us, and, and Leonard will uh, take us out of here. Uh, definitely come back anytime. And thank you for, the, you know, what you're in the line of work where you will never know how many lives you've saved because, right. because you know, statistics don't record the positive. They only record the negative. So. Well, they record the positive, too. We're seeing a reduction in breast cancer incidence, so that's what I'm I guess wanna, so. That's my, that's my I guess end so. point. Uh, that's a good <laughs> comeback. That. Okay. Yeah. Uh, doctor, thank you so much. Leonard, you want to say goodbye to Dr. Horner? Bye, Dr. Horner. It was nice having Bye. you on. Bye. All right, that was good. Uh, yes, thank you. We'll take a little break, and we'll be right back to have fun with Joe. You're listening to WOCA News Talk 1370, Ocala's source for what's happening in today's hottest up-to-date news and topics. Hey, it's Chrissy with Ocala Mac and PC Repair and Ocala Guest Wi-Fi to let you know we have you covered. We are the only local certified Apple and Microsoft computer company in Ocala. We are family owned and operated from mobile repair to wireless networks, viruses, new systems, or security cameras. We do it all. Check us out online, OcalaMacPC.com, or give us a call, 352-566-8324. Tell them Nick, Madison, or Mason.